Friday night, and Helena had just finished a wild party at her workplace. As she walked out of the corporate building, she couldn't help but feel a mix of heartbreak and frustration. She had been crushing on a coworker for months, and he had been leading her on and giving her mixed signals. But as she walked out of the party, she saw him visibly flirting with another woman. Helena's heart sank, and she felt like a fool for believing that he had any interest in her. She pulled out her phone and ordered a cab to take her home. As she waited outside, she tried to keep it together and not let the tears fall. She was anxious for the cab to arrive and take her away from the painful sight of the man she had a crush on moving on without her. She leaned against the wall and closed her eyes, trying to block out the sounds of laughter and music coming from the party. Just as Helena's cab arrived, a mysterious figure stepped out of the shadows and approached her. Need a ride? He asked, his voice laced with danger. Helena's heart raced as she weighed her options. Should she take her chances with this unknown stranger, or wait for the safety of her cab? As Helena hesitated, the stranger reached out a hand and grabbed her arm. Come on, I'll give you a ride, he insisted, his grip tight. Helena's heart pounded in her chest as she tried to pull away, but the stranger was too strong. Just as she was about to give up hope, a car pulled up to the curb and a handsome, religious man named Aaron stepped out. Hi, I'm Aaron. I'll be your driver tonight, he said with a firm face as he opened the door for Helena. Thank you, Helena replied, feeling relieved as she escaped the clutches of the mysterious stranger and got into Aaron's car. Aaron's presence seemed to intimidate the stranger, and they quickly retreated back into the shadows as he approached. As Helena settled into the car, she couldn't help but take in the details of her surroundings. She was struck by the clean and organized space. The car had a faint scent of incense and candle wax, and there were small altar-like spaces set up on the dashboard and back seat. The seats were made of buttery soft leather, and the controls and buttons had a sleek and modern look. Yet there was a little idol of the Indian god Hanumana, kept above the air vents, and the fresh flower offered at its feet, which filled the space with a calming smell. Helena couldn't help but feel a little intimidated by Aaron's modern yet religious aura. She had always been more of an atheist, with little interest in spirituality or the supernatural. She glanced over at Aaron, who was adjusting the rearview mirror and checking his blind spot before pulling out of the parking lot. He was a handsome man, with piercing blue eyes and a chiseled jawline. His dark hair was neatly styled, and his attire was a mix of modern and traditional a crisp white shirt tucked into well-fitting jeans, paired with a pair of black sneakers. Despite his rugged good looks and seeming confidence, Helena couldn't help but sense a depth to Aaron that she hadn't noticed before. He seemed to exude a sense of peace and calm, almost as if he was at one with the world around him. She couldn't help but be drawn to him, and as they set off on their journey, she found herself wondering what else she might learn about him. As they began their journey, Aaron twirled the pencil around his fingers, flipping it back and forth with practiced ease. It was a nervous habit he had picked up years ago from his mother and one that he couldn't seem to shake. Helena watched him with a mixture of amusement and concern. Are you okay? She asked, eyeing the pencil as it spun through his fingers. Aaron chuckled, a little self-conscious. Yeah, I'm fine, he said, noticing her concern. I just do this when I'm driving to keep myself alert. He realized that Helena might be worried about him driving with only one hand, so he placed the pencil on the dashboard and put both hands back on the steering wheel. Don't worry. I've got this, he reassured her with his confidence. As Helena watched Aaron twirl the pencil between his fingers, she couldn't shake the feeling that there was something deeper going on with him. Was he really as composed and confident as he seemed, or was he hiding something? And why did he feel the need to keep himself alert while driving, even if it meant relying on a nervous habit like twirling a pencil? Helena's curiosity was piqued, and she found herself wanting to know more about Aaron and his motivations. Thanks. Helena noticed that Aaron was taking a longer route than she had expected. Hey, can you take the shorter route to the drop-off point? I'm trying to save some money on this cab ride. Aaron hesitated. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. The shorter route is known to be haunted. I've heard of some pretty strange things happening to people who take that route. Helena rolled her eyes. Oh, come on. That's just superstition. I'm sure we'll be fine. Plus, I really need to save some money on this ride. Aaron sighed and ran a hand through his hair. He touched his pencil, flipping it with his fingers again. What are you thinking about so much? Helena chuckles. He thought carefully, looking at his parents' photo which was stuck near the looking mirror. Someone I know, he always told me to avoid this route. Helena placed a hand on Aaron's arm. I understand your concern, but I promise you that we'll be fine. I have complete faith in you as our driver. 
As Aaron gazed into Helena's eyes, he struggled with indecision. Should he confront his doubts or take chance and try the short bet? Helena couldn't shake the feeling that something was troubling Aaron, as she watched him nervously twirl a pencil between his fingers. Just as she was about to ask him about it, he slowed down almost to a stop. Suddenly, a knock on the car window made Helena scream as Aaron veered sharply towards the shortcut. In the darkness, she saw a flash of light and realized that it was a police officer standing outside, a concerned look on his face. Everything okay here? The officer asked. He was peering into the car with his flashlight. Aaron let out a sigh of relief. Yes, everything's fine, he said, forcing a smile. We were just taking a shortcut through the forest. The officer frowned. You should be careful, he warned. This road can be dangerous, especially at night. There have been reports of strange occurrences in the forest, and I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. Helena's heart raced as the officer walked back to his car and drove off. As Aaron navigated through the eerie forest with Helena checking the wind rustle outside, it felt like a storm was brewing. The sky was clouded, and the dusty wind carried the fallen leaves from one place to another. The wind was volatile and hit the car, causing some of it to enter the car engine through the front vents. However, Helena was cozy inside the car, trying to focus on anything other than the creeping sense of unease that seemed to fill the air. She couldn't help but think about how muscular and sturdy Aaron's arm felt when she touched it, and she found herself craving more physical contact. Aaron couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right but he didn't want to alarm Helena. He kept his concerns to himself and twirled the pencil with his fingers. So Aaron, Helena said, trying to make small talk and ease the tension. Tell me more about yourself. What do you like to do in your free time? Aaron smiled, grateful for the distraction. Well, I'm a bit of a history buff. I love learning about ancient cultures and their religions. And I'm also a big fan of yoga and meditation. It helps me stay grounded and focused. Helena raised an eyebrow. Yoga and meditation, that's not exactly what I was expecting from a guy who looks like he could bench press a small car. Aaron chuckled. I guess I'm full of surprises. What about you? What do you like to do in your free time? Helena sighed. Honestly, I'm not really sure. I've been so busy with work and trying to find myself that I haven't had much time for hobbies or interests. But I do love dancing. It's one of the few things that can help me clear my head and forget about all my problems. As they continued to talk and get to know each other, the forest around them seemed to fade away, replaced by the comforting presence of each other's company. As they drove through the spooky forest, the wind started to change, and the air around them seemed to grow colder and the trees seemed to loom closer. The car began to slow down to a crawl. The engine sputtered and the headlights flickered as if something was interfering with its function. What's going on? Helena asked, her voice shaking. I have no idea what's going on, he said his voice filled with confusion. I've never had any problems with this car before. Aaron got out and opened the engine lid, tried to fix the car, and tried to understand what was causing the strange malfunctions, but he had no luck. I don't know what's going on, he said, his voice filled with frustration. I've checked all of the usual suspects, but everything seems to be in working order. He looked around here and there, up and down to say, I don't like this route. Helena's eyes narrowed, she grabbed her phone to rescue herself by booking another cab, and said, or maybe it's something to do with your car engine. Maybe it's not as reliable as you thought it was. She would have been a little less direct if it was not so late in the night and not the middle of a forest. As Helena stepped out of the car, she found that the ground was soft and slippery beneath her feet. She wobbled slightly, her balance thrown off by the unexpected terrain. But before she could fall, Aaron was there to catch her, his strong arms steadying her as she regained her footing. Thanks, Helena said. She gently looked away as she tried to book another cab from her phone. But frustratingly, she couldn't find any service. Helena sighed. Can I borrow your hotspot? My internet is so slow that it's practically non-existent. Aaron hesitated. I'm sorry, miss, but my phone services were long gone from the time we entered the forest. It's like whatever is jamming the car doesn't want us to talk to the outside world. Helena couldn't believe it. She was stuck in the middle of nowhere with a handsome stranger in such a condition, and things were starting to get really spooky. Helena looked around outside and couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. Aaron noticed the fear in her eyes and tried to comfort her. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll see a car passing by and we can ask them for a lift, just hold on a little longer. As Aaron and Helena waited by the side of the road, they tried to pass the time by talking about their fears and insecurities. Helena, Feeling a bit nervous about the darkness surrounding them, turned to Aaron and asked, Are you afraid of the dark? 
Aaron chuckled and shrugged. Not really. I mean, it's just darkness. It's not like it's alive or anything. Helena raised an eyebrow. You never know. Some things in the dark can be pretty terrifying. Aaron shrugged again. I guess you have a point there. But I like to think that as long as I have my wits about me, I can handle whatever comes my way. Helena smiled, feeling a bit more reassured by Aaron's confidence. I hope you're right. I don't think I could handle anything else tonight. I didn't really have a good time at the party. Aaron raised an eyebrow in curiosity. Why is that? Helena hesitated, wondering if she should share her story. But something about Aaron's kind and understanding gaze made her feel like she could trust him. She brushed a strand of hair behind her ear and said, There was this guy at work. He had been leading me on for months, but I'm not sure if we're ever going to happen. Aaron's eyes narrowed. Is he gay? Helena laughed, shaking her head. Shut up, she said it in a friendly way. He's far from gay. I just think he's not interested in me that way. Aaron shrugged his shoulder and said, Forget him. You can do better. I can tell. Any man who doesn't see what he's missing out on is blind. Helena blushed and smiled at the subtle compliment. Thanks. I'll try to remember that. If we make it out of this forest alive, I'll stick a note about it on my wall. Aaron smirked, trying to distract himself from their dire situation. Don't worry, he said, his voice laced with confidence. We'll make it through this. He spun the car keys through his fingers, the metal glinting in the faint light as they moved in an intricate dance. We'll wait a little longer, see a car comes by. If not, we'll walk it. As Helena watched Aaron do that twirl thing again with his fingers, this time with the car keys instead of the pencil, she couldn't help but feel a sense of mystery about that habit. It seemed like an involuntary habit, and yet there was something almost graceful and rehearsed about the way he moved his fingers. As they continued to wait for a ride, the air around them kept getting colder. They had been hoping for a vehicle to come by and give them a ride, but as the minutes ticked by, it seemed that their only option was to walk to the other end of the forest. Helena couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. She felt a shiver run down her spine, and she knew that they had to get out of there as soon as possible. Aaron checked the time and said, I guess we should make a move now, he said, his voice quavering slightly. We can't stay here. It's not safe. Helena nodded, her eyes still fixed on him. Something about him seemed very comforting to her. I agree, she said, her voice laced with concern. We have to find a way out of this forest, and we have to do it fast. We've already driven halfway through, we shouldn't be too far away from the other side. Together, they nodded in accord to keep moving forward. As they walked on the soft and slippery ground beneath their feet, Aaron reached out to take Helena's hand, guiding her around a particularly muddy patch of ground. Be careful with your footing, he said, his voice low and concerned. We don't want to risk an injury on top of everything else. Helena nodded, taking Aaron's hand in hers as they continued to walk. She wasn't used to walking so close to a man at least not without getting her heart broken. Her own thoughts criticized her for feeling attracted toward Aaron. If thoughts could be things, then she couldn't shake the feeling that something was judging them, that unseen eyes from the shadows were watching them. She tried to push the thought to the back of her mind, focusing on putting one foot in front of the other. They walked in silence, the only sound the soft crunch of their footsteps on the forest floor. The forest seemed to close in around them, the darkness and the silence oppressive and unnerving. As they were walking down the deserted road, which felt like almost about an hour, Helena couldn't help but feel a deep sense of exhaustion wash over her. She yawned, as she tried to fight off the heavy desire to sleep. I don't know if I can keep going, Helena said, her voice barely above a whisper. I'm so tired. Aaron rubbing his eyes, also feeling heavy with sleep. We can't stop here, we need to make it to the highway. Helena sighed, her shoulders slumping with weariness. Is this just a physical exhaustion? She asked, her voice laced with emotion. I think all the constant disappointment and heartbreak, it feels like every time I open myself up to someone, they end up letting me down. Aaron replied like a comrade. I understand, he said, his voice full of compassion. I've been there too, but we can't let that stop us from living our lives and finding happiness. For what I know, we have to keep moving forward, no matter how difficult it may seem. As they walked on, the air around them seemed to grow colder and more oppressive. The darkness seemed to close in around them, and the feeling of dread grew stronger. But they knew they had to keep moving, no matter how tired they were or how afraid they felt. They clung to each other, determined to survive whatever horrors lay ahead. Despite their best efforts, they couldn't shake the feeling of sleepiness that seemed to envelop them. They walked on, their bodies unconsciously drawn towards each other, 
seeking out each other's warmth and comfort as they fought to keep their eyes open. It was unclear whether it was their exhaustion, the late hour, or something else at play that was causing them to feel so sleepy. All they knew was that they couldn't keep going much longer. Just when they were starting to lose hope, they caught sight of a vehicle in the distance, parked by the side of the road. Excitedly, they quickened their pace, hoping that the driver would offer them a ride to the nearest bus stop. But as Helena bounded towards the car, Aaron slowed to a halt, his eyes wide with shock. Helena turned back to see what was wrong, and as she followed Aaron's gaze, she saw what had him so stunned. It was his car, the one they thought they had left behind. Aaron recognized the car immediately. It's mine, he exclaimed, his voice laced with confusion. How did it get here? We left it behind. As he checked his pockets, he realized that he still had his car keys. I have the keys right here with me, he said, his brow furrowing in confusion. Helena, struggling to keep her eyes open, tried to make sense of the situation. How is this possible? Are you sure it's your car? She asked. Yes, that's my car's license plate number, Aaron replied, his shock evident in his voice. Helena quickly checked her phone for her Uber booking message and saw that the car's number matched the one she had booked. Aaron's next discovery sent chills down their spines. He called out to Helena to double-check if he was hallucinating, but they both saw their own footsteps leading back the way they had come. Helena looked ahead and saw the same slip mark by the car door, the one that happened when she got off the car, with Aaron quick enough to catch her that moment. But now, the mark was ahead of them. Helena was in utter confusion, her eyes unable to open wider in shock, her exhaustion blurring her vision. This can't be happening, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. She looked at Aaron as he pressed the buttons on his car key, and to her amazement, the car responded. The beep of the car unlocking echoed through the silence of the forest, confirming that it was indeed their car. How is this possible? She asked, turning to Aaron with a mix of confusion and fear on her face. It was as if they were trapped in some sort of a supernatural loop, their attempts to escape thwarted at every turn. Back then she thought it was just her anxiety that made her feel she was being judged or watched, but now, it felt like something was closing on to them from the shadows behind the forest trees. They were so spooked, they couldn't help feeling a sense of desire to hold each other and conform themselves. But since they were just two strangers with no connection with each other, they tried to ignore it, pretending that it was just the cold making them feel this way. As they were drifting off into a deep slumber, they found themselves aware of a faint, ghostly figure, watching over them from a distance, a strange little girl with piercing blue eyes and a sly smile. Helena, I'm not sure of what I'm seeing. Is there a child over there or just my imagination? As Aaron and Helena walked down the dark and winding path, they found themselves clinging to each other for safety and security. They had been seeing strange and unexplained things all night, and the appearance of a ghostly little girl named Lily was no exception. At first, they thought she was just a helpless child lost in the forest. They called out to her, hoping to offer their assistance, but as they got closer, they realized that something was off. The girl seemed to flicker in and out of existence, and her eyes were dark and empty, as if she were not really there at all. Is she? Helena whispered, her voice trembling with fear. Aaron nodded, his face grim. I don't think we want to find out, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. We have to get out of here now. As they turned to run, they were suddenly surrounded by a gush of strong wind leading swirling towards a shadowy figure. Her eyes glowed with an otherworldly light. At first, they were confused, unsure of what they were seeing. But as the figure floated closer, they realized with a start that it was a woman, her face twisted in anger and her eyes glowing with a fierce light. Her long, ghostly hair floated around her head like tendrils of smoke, and her body was translucent and ethereal. Venus' ghostly body floated in the air, her claws extended as if ready to attack. She seemed to sense that Aaron and Helena were a threat to her child, and she came at them with all the fury of a protective mother. Frightened, Aaron and Helena turned and ran, their feet pounding against the ground as they tried to escape. They stumbled through the dense forest, their limbs heavy and their eyes drooping, they were barely able to keep themselves from falling asleep. The strange, almost hypnotic sleepiness that had been plaguing them since they first entered the woods seemed to be getting stronger, and they knew that if they gave in, they might never wake up again. Grimly, they pushed on, their hearts racing as they tried to outrun the spooky ghostly woman that seemed to be stalking them through the trees. Helena's grip on Aaron's hand tightened as they sprinted through the forest, the ghostly figures hot on their heels. They could feel the ground shaking beneath their feet, and the air was filled with the sound of snapping branches and rustling leaves. 
As they ran, Helena and Aaron's bodies bounced and jolted with each step, their feet pounding against the soft, spongy ground. Helena's heart raced in her chest, and she could feel the sweat dripping down her forehead as she struggled to keep up with Aaron's long strides. Despite the fear and adrenaline coursing through her veins, she couldn't help but marvel at how agile and athletic Aaron was, his toned muscles flexing and rippling as he navigated the treacherous path. At one point, he even lifted her up and carried her over a particularly slippery patch of ground, his grip on her tight and reassuring. As they ran, they were forced to rely on each other. They stumbled upon an abandoned lighthouse, and as they burst through the door, they collapsed onto the floor, panting and out of breath. It's her, Aaron assumed, the closer she gets, the drowsier we feel. Helena was in disbelief, who the hell was she? Poltergeist, a vengeful spirit, Aaron replied in the dim light. They could see each other's bodies trembling with exhaustion, their clothes sticking to their skin as they sweated in fear. But they knew that they couldn't give up now. They had to keep fighting, even if it meant ignoring the deep, almost primal instinct to find safety and security in each other's embrace. They couldn't help but wonder if this was the end. Would they ever make it out of the strange, spooky place alive? Or would they succumb to the sleepiness that seemed to be creeping up on them, never to wake up again? They didn't have anywhere to go as they huddled together in the cramped lighthouse. They were forced to sit so close to each other that their bodies were pressed together, feeling each other's warmth and fear. The space was tight, and they could feel each other's breath on their skin. They could hear each other's hearts pounding in their chests, and they knew that they were in this together. They had to find a way to escape the ghostly presence that seemed to be closing in on them, or they would be trapped in this spooky place forever. The room was dark and cramped, with no way to escape except through the door that led straight into Venus' grass. Aaron's heart raced as he tried to come up with a plan, his mind overwhelmed with fear and uncertainty. He couldn't bear the thought of leaving Helena behind and running away on his own, especially when she looked at him with a mix of fear and trust. Despite their fear, Helena could feel Aaron's strong arms pinning her against the wall, his breath warm on her neck. She could feel the heat rising between them, the electric energy almost palpable. They couldn't risk separating or approaching the door, as Vina was still out there, hunting for them. Helena tried to say something in a state so physically and spiritually spent, that Aaron gently placed a finger over his lips, signaling for her that she does not need to say anything. They were just breathing together, catching their thoughts together. Aaron's mind was racing with thoughts of desperation and survival. He didn't want to keep running from his fears and desires. He moved his lips closer to Helena's ear and whispered, Can you trust me? He had a plan in mind. Helena shuddered at the sound of his voice and the feel of his hot breath on her skin. She turned her face towards him, her lips inches from his, and nodded yes, submitting herself to him. He then began to perform a series of intricate hand signs, his fingers moving with precision and grace. It was that twirling thing again. Helena couldn't help but wonder if this is where he got his twirling habit from. She watched in fascination as he went through the series of intricate hand signs, his movements precise and controlled. Helena watched in awe as Aaron closed his eyes and recited an ancient mantra, his voice barely above a whisper. Aaron gestured for her to come closer and then demonstrated the hand signs again, this time more slowly. Helena looked at him in confusion. She didn't have the energy to understand what was going on. Aaron silently picked up Helena's hands and placed them in the correct positions, mimicking the hand signs he had just performed. Helena watched in confusion as he made her repeat the movements, his face serious and focused. She didn't understand what he was trying to do, but she trusted him enough to go along with it. As they practiced the hand signs in silence, Aaron's eyes never left hers, and she could feel a sense of determination and purpose radiating from him. As they stood there, their bodies pressed against each other, they found themselves drifting off into a celestial state. Their hearts melted away as the condensed sounds of Aaron's words ran through their minds and bodies. Aaron's heart raced with a mix of fear and desire. He couldn't shake the feeling of being inexplicably drawn to Helena, even in the face of danger. He knew he had to confront Vina, but the thought of leaving Helena alone and vulnerable filled him with dread. Aaron's feet felt heavy as he emerged from the safety of the lighthouse. He knew that he had to face Vina, no matter how terrifying it seemed. He took a deep breath and stepped out into the faint light of the moon, his eyes searching for the ghostly figure of the woman. As he scanned the area, he couldn't help but notice the way his hands were shaking. He clenched them into fists, trying to steady himself as he called out to Vina. He spoke with conviction, his voice echoing through the night. Wandering spirit, show yourself. There was no answer, 
only the sound of the wind rustling through the trees. Aaron's heart pounded in his chest as he took a few steps forward, his eyes fixed on the spot where he had last seen Vina's ghostly form. As he looked deeper into the mist, Vina's ghostly figure emerged from the mist. It seemed to unravel from the swirling smoke, her translucent body taking shape before their eyes. Her long hair flowed around her head like tendrils of smoke. Her face was twisted in anger, her eyes glowing with a fierce light. Aaron shook at the sight of her, but he pressed his feet strong on the ground and stayed put. He took a deep breath to summon all his courage and moved head, speaking to her firmly. Hear my voice, spirit. His voice strikingly brought Vina to a surprising halt. Aaron stood tall. He was determined to protect Helena and find a way out of this strange night. Hear my voice, I understand how you feel, he said, his voice low and soothing. It's natural to feel angry and vengeful when we experience such trauma and loss, but holding on to that anger will only continue to cause you pain. It's time to let go and find a way to move on. Venus shook her head, how can I just let go? My daughter was taken from me and I need to make sure her killer is punished. Meanwhile, Helena stayed hidden in the shadows as she watched Aaron and Vina face off. She now understood the meaning behind the hand signs that Aaron had taught her. Those were special hand signs he used in order to communicate with spirits. Aaron quickly signaled Helena with a quick glance while facing Vina's ghostly form. He signaled for her to execute the second phase of their plan. Helena steadied her trembling knees and took a deep breath. She clenched her sweaty palms into fists and watched as Vina's spirit drifted closer to Aaron. She noticed Lily's spirit not too far away from Vina, and she silently slipped through the shadows, her movements stealthy and precise. She knew that she had to be careful, but she also knew that she had to be brave. Aaron's hand sign worked. Voices of the spirit came streaming through between the realms of the living and the dead. Vina shook her head, I can't just let go. My daughter was taken from me, and I need to make sure her killer is punished. Aaron nodded, I understand your desire for justice but sometimes the best way to honor the memory of our loved ones is to find a way to let go of our anger and find peace. It's not easy, but it's the only way to truly honor their memory. As Aaron spoke, he could see Vina's aura slowly start to dissipate. She slowly sank back down to the ground, her rage and pain starting to recede. How do I do that? Vina asked, her voice shaking. She looked down at her feet. Aaron took a deep breath. It won't be easy, but it starts with finding a way to forgive. Not just the person who harmed your daughter, but also yourself. Forgive. Vina raised her bloody eyes at him. That's what you want me to do? Although Aaron realizes that Vina may lash out, he still tried to calm her down before she goes on a rampage. It's important to recognize that. We all make mistakes, and it's okay to forgive ourselves for any wrongdoing. That is the way to heal and find peace. Vina looked at Aaron, tears welling up in her eyes. You want me to find peace while my daughter suffers. Your daughter is suffering right now because you are a constant reminder of the worst that had happened to her in the past, he said loudly to Vina. Vina shook visibly. I know, no one deserves a past like that. That is why you need to remind yourself of the good memories. You must think harder. Vina knew that he was right, but she couldn't remind herself anything to help herself. She sunk down to the ground. What good will memories do? Aaron replied firmly. It's the only good thing a parent can give their children. Vina's eyes opened widely, her knees shook in revelation. Aaron knew she needed to hear this, every parent knows that their child will have to walk this world without them, and memories are the only place they can guide us from. Lily needs you, she needs to remember that it will be okay, bad things happen but we learn and move on, it's the only way. Our memories guide us, they teach us to be kind, to love, and to find hope in the face of hardship. The memories of our mothers and fathers show us the path to a better future. Life is not about the time we spend between birth and death, but about how we choose to live in harmony and cherish the good things. Vina fell to her knees. She touched the grass on the surface while trying to remember life with her daughter. I used to imagine her wedding day, her college life, she and I used to humor about it. And now, I can only remember that I died a pathetic mother who couldn't save her daughter. Lily raised her head. She had been silently standing there while Helena came closer to her. Helena performed the hand signs and Lily's voice came echoing through it as they had planned. Lily wanted to let her mother know, You are a good mother, Mom, I remember you. Vina turned in surprise. She heard her daughter's voice after many years. You used to pack my tiffin. You took me to school. You loved me. You worked every day, but you always picked me up from school. I couldn't remind you how we died. I know who killed us.
Venus stood up gratefully after learning that the killer has been found. Her eyes opened wide. Who was it? Who killed my daughter? She asked with her fists ready to find and kill. Lily cried and answered with a nervous voice. It was me, Mom. It was me. Lily cried. Venus shook her knees. I fell from the cliff. I just wanted to get you those mountain flowers. Dad used to get you those every year, but he was gone. I'm so sorry for being so reckless, Mom. I saw you die because you couldn't bear losing both Dad and me. I couldn't cross over. I was so scared. I saw the doctors cover you in a white sheet and you never got a funeral. And now you've become an angry spirit, all because of me. I'm so sorry, Mom. It was then that Vina realized that Lily's death had been a tragic accident and not a murder as she had thought. And Lily has been blaming herself for it all this time. Lily just wanted to do something special for her mom. She hugged Lily so tight that even the heavens cried. It's okay, sweetie. She brushed her hands on Lily's head. It was just an accident. It was not your fault. It's okay. Aaron and Helena knew that was time to cross over. He summoned the light from the moon to guide them. May the light guide you to the other side, gentle spirits, and bring you the peace and healing you deserve. Venus' spirit looked at her daughter Lily and whispered her last words. Don't worry, child. Don't be scared. I will pray to the other side. I will pray to them to have me as your mother again, in the next life. I love you so much, child. Vina closed her teary eyes in silence. A vortex swirled around the spirits, pulling everything closer to its center. The spirits hovered in the air. It was as if a thousand suns had converged into one. The forest was bathed in an otherworldly glow. Aaron and Helena grabbed onto each other, drawing strength from their connection to keep the vortex of light open until they cross over. The spirits were enveloped in the glow of the moon's light, finally at peace. Aaron and Helena collapsed against each other, their hearts still racing with a mix of fear and desire. Their phones started pinging with a flood of pending incoming notifications. The air had cleared, and it was time to go. As they found their way back to the car and sat inside, Aaron couldn't help but reflect on the events of the night. His eyes fixed on the photo of his mother that sat on the dashboard. I think we learned that mothers are truly incredible beings, he said, his voice laced with emotion. Even after death, their love and guidance can still reach us through memories and spirit. Helena, still frightened with the activities of the night, nodded. We definitely learned something tonight, she said. Aaron noticed she needed some distraction from the horrors of the night, so he lightened the mood with small talks. I think we also learned that shortcuts are bad. Helena smiled. Well, maybe not all that bad if you want to get some coffee and talk about it. She flirted, a hint of hope in a voice that their harrowing experience had the potential to grow into something more. You were quite incredible the way you handled all that. She appreciated him. Aaron hesitated for a moment before responding. I had your help. Couldn't have done it without you, he reassured her. As Aaron clutched the gear and started the engines, they were relieved to see their car engines were working again and that they can finally drive themselves out of the forest. Helena whiffed out a breath and asked him, Hey, earlier, you were making gestures with your fingers. What were those? And how did you know all that? Aaron said, Those were hand mudras, hand gestures used for channeling spiritual energy. My mom was a member of a mystic group called the Death Retainers. They were responsible for guiding spirits and taking care of the affairs of the deceased. She taught me about them before she passed away. I'm sorry for your loss, Helena said. I've never heard of the death retainers before. It sounds like a very important and meaningful role to have. They prefer to keep a low profile, Aaron replied. I never imagined I would want to follow in my mom's footsteps, but maybe I'll consider it now. Helena couldn't help but feel a mix of intrigue and concern at the mention of the heritage of death retainers. Well, I think you'll be great at it. I don't know about you, but I could really use a coffee after all that, she said. Her voice laced with uncertainty. Do you want to? He paused. I mean, he stammered again. Do you want to update the cab drop-off point to a different location? He asked with uncertainty. She chewed on her lips, cleared her throat, and said, I think I make better coffee at my place. If you want to come over, I think I might still get my cab discount. She flirted a smile at him. Aaron looked deeply at her. She had found some kind of comfort with him. He grinned and steered the car out of the forest while saying, Well, when you put it that way, then I guess I feel glad I took this shortcut. He smiled a flirt back. And as the night ended, he drove towards her apartment, looking forward to the sunrise together. And as the starry sky glittered, two shooting stars trailed across the sky like new spirits making their way to the next life. The End Death Retainer by Samia Dipter Roy, also known as Artist Roy